Hi guys, today we're going to have a quick look at this kit from Valum, and this is their Handley Page Harrow Mark II in 170 second scale. So before we look at the kit, a quick history of the Harrow. This is a heavy bomber from the interwar period. It was developed in the 1930s and first delivered to squadrons in 1937 as part of the RAF plan to expand their heavy bomber squadrons. However, the Harrow didn't find much use as a bomber and by 1939 it had been largely replaced by aircraft such as the Wellington and instead it was being used more as a transport aircraft or as an air ambulance. The Mark I Harrow was powered by two Bristol Pegasus 10 engines while the later Mark II had two Pegasus um, 20 engines. Later versions of the Harrow which were used as ambulances and air transports often had a couple of changes. The most obvious of these is the turrets are replaced by fairings to streamline them and they have some side windows in the fuselage. These later versions are often referred to as sparrows. In terms of model kits, the only modern kits are made by Valum. You have a number of different options. So we have the Harrow Mark II here. Another version of the Mark II, which is the version we're looking at with the toothy marking, which is simply a different paint scheme. And then yet another version of the Mark II with another paint scheme here. Then finally we have two versions of the Sparrow. This first version features the fared over turret but doesn't have the side windows. And the second version here with the D-Day markings has both the fairings over the turrets and the side windows. Looking at the box we don't have a lot of information on the sides. Simply some manufacturer details and a, uh, a small description of the contents. Now looking inside I have unbagged these sprues already and I have removed a couple of parts from the sprue just to play around with them. So this isn't how they were packed when I received the kit. Let's take a look at the instructions first. So there's no cover on this instruction booklet, instead we just jump straight into that sprue map, or the first part of the sprue map. The first part of the instructions there dealing with the seats and the control panel, and the second step being building up part of the cockpit. We continue to build up the cockpit interior there by fixing it to the side of the fuselage. Then we move on to the engines, which I believe are supplied as resin pieces. We'll see those in a moment. Then we have the turrets. So we have one turret at the front, one at the back. Step six involves putting the two fuselage sides together with the wing spar between them. building up that quite distinctive tail plane. Step eight involves adding the wings and the engines. And then the final steps, the last few details such as the undercarriage. The colour guide is separate to the instructions. We have two schemes. The first one, perhaps not surprisingly, in the standard RAF Dark Earth and Dark Green. This is uh, November 1940. And the second scheme there, 1941-93 Squadron, in all overall green. However, I did do a bit of research on this, which suggested that that colour scheme might be incorrect and that perhaps Valum have misinterpreted a black and white photo there that the aircraft wasn't really uh, overall green. There were a few alternative suggestions including that it may have been RAF night all over. The back page of the paint scheme has the paint callouts here which are the letters we've seen throughout the instructions. Moving on to the decals, I wasn't particularly blown away by these. You can see looking at them that the red colour in particular doesn't really match the RAF insignia red, it's a bit too bright 
I'm not sure how that will look when they go down over a paint scheme, but I suspect maybe you might want to either mask those or find some alternative decals. I do have a set of RAF code letters for 172nd scale, though I'm not sure I have roundels and fin flashes spare. Looking inside the kit, the first sprue here is the wings and parts of the engine and undercarriage. As I said, I did cut off this wing piece earlier just to play around with it and see how it was. As you can see, we have the detail there of the wing material being pulled over the uh, internal ribbing. That's quite nice to see. All engraved panel lines, as we would expect. We have the engines here. Everything looks reasonably sharp. Propellers look nice and sharp. We've got the guns here for the turrets. The early versions of the Harrow were armed with Lewis guns in the turrets, while the later versions had Vickers K machine guns. It's quite nice that on features here like the fairings for the wheels, the eject pin marks are on the inside where they won't be seen. I do notice though that on these parts there are no um, alignment pins for the two halves. That would be quite interesting to see how they fit together. Looking at the second sprue, we have the other half of the wing plus the tail planes and some of the nose pieces. Again, I feel like that detail will take a paint coat and then some dry brushing and a uh, panel line wash really nicely. On the next sprue, we have the main fuselage halves. Again, I've cut the other half off this sprue just to play around with it. We also have the wheels and a few of the bits and pieces. You can see here just how long the harrow is. Again, on the wheels and on the fuselage halves themselves, we have no alignment pins. Hopefully they'll be a good fit on those despite that. We've got the exit entry door there. And of course the area here for the mounting of the high wings. We do also have some resin pieces in the kit, so we have the Pegasus engines and the two seats. To be honest, I'm a bit surprised with these being resin because I feel like particularly the seats could be moulded in plastic. However, I think those resin engines will look very nice with a coat of paint, some dry brushing and a nice dark wash on them to bring out that detail. Clear parts here. We have two different versions, it seems here, for the um, turret glass. One has a small cutout at the top and one doesn't. I didn't see any mention of that in the instructions, but I'm guessing that's for slightly different versions. So perhaps some more research will be required there. And looking at the sprues, I feel like we do get the fairings for the turrets in this kit. So perhaps we could make a sparrow with those fared off turrets from this kit if we wanted to. Similarly here with what I think is the rear turret, we've got two versions of the glass there with that just that small protruding piece being the difference between the two. So as I say, I did cut off a few pieces from the sprue just to have a quick look at things like alignment. It's a bit hard to test the alignment of the wings because we have still got those sprue nubs on that I haven't cleaned up. But certainly there doesn't seem to be any warping and it does look like the alignment will be fairly decent on them. Equally with the two fuselage halves, despite the fact we have no alignment pins, I have a fairly good feeling, without wanting to attempt fate, that these should line up quite well. You'll also notice that in line with the roll of the harrow, we don't have the ability to open the bomb bay and of course we have no bomb bay detail and no bomb supplied to this kit. That makes sense as I believe that none of the Mark II Harrows were used as bombers. Now I did cut a few of the cockpit pieces from the sprue and try to dry fit them according to the instructions. The pieces all seemed very decent but as you can see here there's not a lot to guide me in terms of the fit. It's not always clear from the instructions the way that two parts uh, join each other. So here for example if this piece goes in front of or underneath that piece it's not quite clear so it will need probably quite a lot of dry fitting 
um, and maybe a few bits sort of jumping around the instructions. I suspect when I, when I build this cockpit what I'm going to do is fit it directly into the side of the fuselage and that will probably give me a bit more guidance. Anyway guys that was a very quick look at the Harrow Mark II in 172nd scale from Valum. I haven't had much time to do any modelling at all this week due to work but hopefully this kit will be in the line to build once I've got long running projects like the 124th scale Spitfire finished and a few other bits and pieces. I'm trying to bring you a combination of shorter review videos like this and longer videos where I bring you in-depth builds. And I would like to say a huge thank you to everyone for the success of my most recent video, which was the Knocked Out Sherman diorama. I was absolutely blown away by how uh, popular that was. It got really thousands of views in a very short time, which uh, was, you know, I was really, really grateful for. Um, and it was great to read all your comments and your feedback on that and to hear how much you enjoyed the video. So thank you for that, guys. Much appreciated. I also want to give special thanks to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters. One of the big benefits of being a member is that you get access to lots of behind the scenes photos and discussion and uh, upcoming projects long before they go on to my channel. So if that seems like something you're interested in, then there is a link in the description below. The motorsport season starts again this weekend, so I'm not sure if I will have time to do much modeling because I'm going to be marshalling on Saturday, but I will bring you another video soon. And until then, thank you very much for watching and have fun modelling.